Hello everyone, how are you doing? And I need to turn this heater off. And also, you guys who are on Twitch, you need to let me know. It's my audio, my audio is, I'm finding it distorting. I'm turning it down a little bit. And I think I need to turn down the music or audio. Like, some of these are just too loud when I was listening back on Twitch. But anyway, yeah, it's me again for the second time. And having beer this time. <laughs> Instead of mimosa. My voice is much lower than the music was. You know, I, I'm messing with it. I'm going to turn up the soundboard a little. It, I just want to, when I was listening back, it seemed like it was peaking a bit. You guys will just have to let me know. Let me know if I, there's adjustments that I need to do. But this is some grapefruit beer. I had it in front of the heater, so it got all bubbly. Warm beer is not that good. It's cold at the bottom, though. So we just got to drink all the warm part on the top so we can get to the bottom. Um, yeah, but if you, if you think I should turn it down a little, let me know. I'm gonna how about on this end? I think that's keeping it from peaking so much. Okay, everyone, but thank you for joining me on Twitch because it's helping me get to my affiliate status. I just, and, and I realized I screwed up my last stream. The title was all wrong on my last stream because I hit the wrong button. I'm going to fix that. The title was supposed to be about Project Archimedes. I'm going to fix that. I just noticed. Boomer. You know, a boomer mistake. Oh, God. I didn't check. Make sure to have lipstick on my teeth. You know me. <laughs> One day, I'm not going to check and I'm going to have lipstick on my teeth the whole time. And I'm going to die of embarrassment. Okay, I just got finished watching the show. Who else here just got finished watching the show? Or do you all just wait for me to tell you about the show? I have a feeling my opinions just aren't popular. <laughs> I mean, maybe amongst you guys who watch, but amongst other anarchists, I don't think my opinions on this show are that popular. First of all, I don't think the show is very good. It's not bad, but it's not good. It's boring. It's way too long. This could have been done in two hours and have been really good but it is tedious. It just makes anarchists look very tedious. And I know we can be. Maybe, okay, we can be really tedious. Maybe it's just super accurate. It is showing just how pedantically tedious we can be. So, all right, we're in episode five, and I have to tell you, I'm glad there's only one more episode. And that lady, Erica, again, who's in Belize, is the biggest sweetheart in the world. She just is the biggest sweetheart in the world. So I've got my notes. This is probably going to be about another half hour show, though I'd like to hear your comments because I feel like I'm being a bit, bit of a negative Nancy and I don't like that. I feel like I'm actually being a Karen and I want to talk to the manager who made this show. I want to talk to the manager. Okay. Let me get my notes. <laughs> Let me get my notes here. Okay. Oh, if I had to describe the word, the show, in two words, I put it up at the top of my notes. I said it was really bitchy. The whole tone of the show was really bitchy. It was catty as hell. It was like a bunch of preteen girls. Now, I know there's some really serious shit going on. A dude committed suicide. Paul committed suicide, by the way. We're getting to that. And, you know, John, who was a sweetheart, got murdered two episodes ago. But still, now the attitude of the people afterwards, and not all of them, is really bitchy. Let me tell you who's not being really bitchy. Lily is not being really bitchy. Jason is not being really bitchy. But everyone else... Maybe not Juan, with, with, instead of John Galt, he's Juan Galt. That is so adorable. And of course, Erica's never bitchy. But just like the general tone, it's nah. It's like a big cat fight, you know? Okay, so it starts out 
okay, maybe this is just me. Maybe you guys would be into this. But, you know, since Lisa and Nathan got thrown off of, there's my anarchist bra strap again, um, from, you know, producing anarcho polco, uh, so they went to do, I didn't even write down what it was called, what was it, like a narco healing or something like that, or it was this really hippy dippy, let's gaze at our navels and, you know, non some crystals. That's not like my type of thing. A narc awakening, that was it. That's not my type of thing. So maybe I'm being like overly sarcastic about it, but yeah. When it gets really hippy dippy like that, like, no, I'm, I'm not very granola. Um, but, but, but I did agree. And I think it was Lisa who said, originally this whole thing was supposed to be about fixing oneself because you have to fix oneself before you can fix the world. Okay, I get it. But I'm going to give like a conclusory statement. Let me drink down some more of the warm beer so I can get to the cold on the bottom. At the end, I looked at Wayne and I said, they picked the wrong community for this show. They tried, because like Jeff Berwick was like, and and I'm, and I'm he got all teary-eyed too, which was just like, got me even a little teary-eyed. And he's like, oh, you know, this was supposed to be this community thing. And I'm like, was it really though? A conference is once a year. It's not a community. It's an event. I understand that some of the people that came to the conferences over the years decided to stay and live there, but the majority of the thousands of people who show up just show up for the event. That's like, it's not a community. If they really wanted to do like a show about an anarchist community or even a libertarian community, they should be talking about the Free State Project. Or they should be talking about Porkfest, which then has the Free State Project. It's not a narco polco. It's just not. Maybe that's why the disconnect is so big for me. And as the show goes on, I think the value, the educational value of, you know, getting the, the idea of a narco capitalist out into the mainstream, the value of that is rapidly diminishing. I thought the first two episodes, I was like, yeah, it had some stuff in it I didn't really care for, but it was going to open some eyes. I, I think the value of that is greatly, greatly diminishing as it just turns into one big cat fight. Like, and there's, n there's some real shitty things done interpersonally, but there's also some things you could see both sides. So, you know, I know Nathan and Lisa were really ass mad because Jeff Berwick brought in this other chick, but you know, they have a right to be super ass mad because just turning his access off the discord and the email, like that's a bitch move. Like it was just so childish, that whole change of management. And obviously, Nathan was really hurt. And like, there was a moment, at first I was like, oh, you're being real bitchy about it. But then on the drive home, there was a real candid moment with him. And I had a sense of connection, like what happened with me with the LNC. Like, he was putting on this really, like, I don't care and ha, ha, ha. I'm not going to stand and I'm just sitting here laughing. As, but he was hurt. He was like super hurt and that was uncool. And, 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 and it was super uncool for Dana and Jeff to get up there and go, oh, knowing that they were in the audience, this is the most relaxed I've ever been. It's like, did you really need to stab him in the back like that? How would you like, you know, maybe they should turn around so you could twist that knife a little more. I, I just did not care for that. But I also don't think and what was her name? I can't remember the lady's name. Help me. Jennifer Kill, I think was her name. I, I don't think she was necessarily treated fairly either. So maybe it's just that 
I am a different kind of anarchist. I get told all the time in the comments on these shows that I'm not a real anarchist. And, you know, my opinion of that is, yeah, like I care. Um, gatekeep, gatekeep harder commies. But it's not even just the commies who are gatekeeping. I'm going to say some realities that some anarchists are not going to agree with me on. Hierarchies are inevitable. If you think anarchy means there'll never be any hierarchies, you're not dealing with human beings because they're inevitable. It doesn't mean they transfer to every area of life, but if you're dealing like say with, hey, I got issues with my computer. There's going to be a natural hierarchy that arises with the guys that know something about computers and with the dumbasses who don't. That's just going to happen. Okay, Jessica Kill. It's just natural. So that guy who wanted to sell t-shirts, who got all upset because she told him he couldn't, and I laughed, what was that word you used? I can't. I mean... No, anarchy does not mean you just do anything that you want. It means everything voluntary. And if that is a hotel that they contracted for that space and they put on that event, they have every right to say what happens in certain spaces. And if she was selling vendor space, yes, She's going to tell someone who wants to set up in premium print vendor space that somebody paid a lot of money for that you can't just set up for free. Now, maybe that wasn't the best business model. Maybe it should have been more warning given to people, but to act like that was just completely anti-anarchist, it was just ridiculous. All conferences do that. I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of anarchists in the LP. There's a lot of anti, well, hopefully we're all anti-authoritarian. But go and try to set up a table in the premium vendor space and see if your ass doesn't get told you can't do it. And there's nothing anti-libertarian about that. In fact, you guys aren't just anarchists. You're supposed to be anarcho-capitalists, which means you understand making money. So I just think that whole segment is going to confuse people. It's not a free for all. It's not, that's a caricature. But if he was allowed to set it up for free in the past and that policy changed, yes, there was a breakdown in communication. There wasn't a breakdown in anarchy. There was a breakdown in communication. And Jessica should have communicated that better if that was the issue. But it wasn't anti-anarchy. It didn't make her a Nazi like some people were calling her. I, I don't know her, okay? But I've seen this happen before with women who are brought in. You know I'm not big on the identity politics, but I'm also not big on denying reality. And new, strong women that are brought in are always made out to be the queen bitch. And that's the way it seemed like they wanted, you know, some villainous. And, and she was a target. I don't know. For all I know, she could be the biggest bitch in the world. I don't know. But it didn't seem that way to me in the show. It seemed like she was just a, com a convenient target and she wasn't treated exactly fairly. But I could be wrong. As I said, that was a real dick move, what they did to Nathan and Lisa, who you know I like. And Nathan was really, really hurt. And the fact that he's dead now, I bet, you know, Jeff feels a little bad about that. Nathan saved Jeff's bacon in the beginning. Like he said, he was drunk during all of the 2017 one. So a lot of people were done dirty there, but that has nothing to do with anarchy. Let me tell you, you want to see people done dirty? Like I always say, you think libertarians fight? You ain't seen nothing. Get involved in church. I've been involved in church life with Christians 
and you want to see some backstabbing catty bullshit, you want to know why? It's not because Christians are bad. It's not because anarchists are bad. It's because humans are going to human. And that's what some humans sometimes do. And we've got to constantly try to encourage our better natures. And just that just really wasn't brought out. It was like, ah, it's anarchists, and it all fell apart. Okay? You could do a show like this on almost any conference, and it goes through phases like this. Hell, look at the last Libertarian Party convention. Parts of it fell apart. You ended up having the chair up there in a bullhorn with half of the people, you know, putting in 400 write-ins and because they didn't want to get to a certain vote. This kind of stuff just happens in conventions. You know, you had one, from what I hear, I, w I was thrown off. So I don't know the fact of the matter. But, you know, I heard that the really shitty convention logo got shoved down the throats of the rest of the convention committee by one person. And I asked how much money they made on those shirts, and it was basically nothing. I made little old me without the advertising power of the Libertarian Party and splitting it with the designer weighed, made way more money than the party did because I had a good logo. And they had that shitty logo that was the hobby horse of one person. This isn't to say that the Libertarian Party is a failure. It's just people. It happens. Oh God, that that was my biggest. Can you tell? Like I'm a, I I need some beer to settle down. And guess what? Another tr a Twitch metric I found out. You know, I feel like I keep getting learning more metrics. Three concurrent viewers, and they want me to have five people chatting. Just say stuff. I don't even care. Just say stuff. See, taxation is theft a million times. Okay, so where was I? Okay, now we're going to get on to the, the more tragic situation with Lily. I agree and disagree. I understand that Lily is an icon in this movement. And she's been through hell she's been through hell but Thaddeus Russell got up and spoke and I agreed with him and I didn't agree with him I agreed with his idealism but there was a reality that needed to be pulled in so he had said this this poor girl oh, I drank that beer too fast and I agree with her like she was screwed man but they're like, nobody wants to take her in. She, she's in trouble and we're supposed to be a community and we didn't bring her in. But you're not a community, you're a conference. Yeah, I understand we all loosely hold the values of anarchism, but that's the beauty of anarchism. It's very loose. But it's not just somebody who lost their job who needed a place to stay. It's somebody that the drug cartels might have been after. I'm not saying it's her fault, but I'm also not, I'm also saying, you know, not everybody is willing to put their life on the line. And I think that's a big ask, particularly when the people who live there that could take her in had families. You may be willing to help other people, but you're not going to sacrifice your children for them. That is is just a life and yeah it freaking sucked to be her but the guilt trip on other people who are kind of like you know i you know i would prefer not to be murdered by a drug cartel and to say and to make it like her and john came and like they made it this community no, remember in episode two when they came, they started trashing the community. Now, I'm not blaming them at all. Every time, the more I see of John slash Shane, he seems like such a sweet soul. Like, how come it seems like the best people get murdered, you know? Like some of the sweetest, like I watch a lot of crime shows and it seems like some of the like sweetest souls on earth 
get murdered. Like they, they get the, the shittiest end of the stick. So I'm not blaming him at all. But I'm also not going to be like really guilt tripping people who are kind of like, you know, I don't think I want to get involved in the middle of a potential drug cartel hit. I can tell you, and you can shame me if I, if you want, I'm being honest. If I lived there and that was going in, I would not have taken her in. Not because I didn't, wouldn't like her or anything like that. I'd have been scared. I'm just being honest. I'd have been scared. I don't want to be shot. Listen, you lost your job. You need some money. You need me to lend you money. You need me to give you work. You need a place to stay till you could save some money. Okay. You need a place to hide out from drug cartels who might be trying to murder you and might murder the people you're staying with. I don't know. That's a bit of a bigger ask. It is. Let's just be realistic here. It sucks. Remember, Erica said she could come to Belize and stay there. And I don't know where Lily ended up. In the interviews at the end, she looks great. Like, however she ended up, like, she looks great. And I'm looking forward to the last episode because I want to know how her story ends. I'm very interested in her story. But I'm not surprised they were having trouble ha finding somebody to take them in. Because you're dealing with violent drug cartels. Whether or not she was involved or not. The drug cartels, if they believe she was, that's all that mattered. <laughs> but Lily got real. Okay, let me tell you where my respect for Lily, and some people might have been mad at her for saying this. But to me, this was brutal honesty. I've said all along, I understand he was a tortured soul. And I understand the military fucked him up. But that Paul guy was an asshole. He, like, or, oh, he was just a good person who was messed up. No, I don't think he was a good person towards the end there. He was a, he was a, he was not. Let's just... He was a rabid dog at the end there. And when Lily said, she didn't say in these words, I wish I wrote down the exact words she said, but she basically said when she heard he committed suicide, all she felt was relief. Because otherwise she'd have been wondering her whole life, was he gonna come after her? Cause he acted like a rabid dog. Now he's a human being. Deserves sympathy, but a lot of people tried to help him and he just wasn't going to be helped. And you can't force someone to get help, but and you also can't force innocent people. Like the way he tormented Jason, that's just inexcusable. Jason's such a sweetheart. He didn't deserve to have to go onto Facebook every other day to see what kind of death threats this guy was giving to him. That ain't right. That ain't right at all. And Lily was honest. You know, a lot of other people, oh, you know, it's so bad. Yeah, okay. As a Christian, anytime someone made in the image of God dies, like, outside their time, you know, they take their own life, they're murdered, that is a tragedy. But there's other people to be considered here. And the fact that Lily now doesn't have to look over her shoulders at this nutcase... She was honest, and I respect her for that. Because you want to know something? It seems like when jerks die, everyone feels like they got to turn around and say a bunch of nice things about them. I don't think you should go out of your way to speak ill of the dead. But also, I don't think you should lie about them. That guy terrorized people, and now they're not terrorized. And it sucks he's dead, but it's a good thing they're not being terrorized anymore. He was stalking them. I've been stalked. It sucks. It screws with your head. You know, this is many, many years ago before, like, stalking was really taken seriously. But, like, 
I was stalked to the point where the picture of the guy who was stalking me had to be posted up at the front reception of a place I worked at so that the receptionist would recognize him if he saw him coming down the hall and call the police to the point where no mail callers were allowed to be put through to my desk where every day there was this message board where he posted messages about me that I would like threatening but low-key threatening not overt threatening where you'd get in trouble like he'd post things like oh here's a picture of me which is how I knew how he looked like just so you'll recognize me in a crowd because he wanted to put in my head that I should I, I should need that knowledge posting maps to my house saying somebody should go shut me up people wonder why I'm so open now you want to know why I post my address everywhere why I post my phone number everywhere because of that guy because I knew what it was like to feel like a hunted animal where someone was just dying to get your information and publish it and I took that power away from anybody to ever do that to me again a lot of people don't know this part of my story it's way before I was involved in politics but I let me turn off the the air conditioner just came on I'm sure you could hear it one second So yeah, being stalked sucks. And my sympathy is with the victims, is with the people who were being terrorized by this guy. I wish he had gotten help, but you have no right to put people through hell like that. And I think that was my hot take and nobody's saying anything. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if I just shocked you, if you thought that was just cold hearted, but I've been there. Okay, last thing, maybe last thing, unless, unless there's comments. The documentarians tried to make it like, if only Lily had this sweet, sweet crypto money, she wouldn't have been in the dire straits she was in. Yeah, she would have. Yeah, she would have. Because she had to be in hiding. You can't be in ostentatious hiding. Having a lot of money makes you really visible. So maybe some things would have been easier, but no. That situation with her very desperate straits had very little to do with the crypto haves and the crypto have-nots, even though they kept trying to paint it that way. So, I'm just ended up wishing that this was about the Free State Project. And believe me, there's plenty of drama there. Nick Sarwark lives there. There's plenty of drama there. It wouldn't have been like it would have been all, you know, you know, baskets of puppies. But I think it would have been more realistic and it would have been about an actual libertarian community. Not a one-off event with some people who happen to live there full time. I don't know. What do you think? So next week will be the last instance of this. But I think the week after that... I know it's not exactly politics, but I'm going to make it political because... <laughs> what's that meme i i promise not to get political two beers later you know it's impossible for me not to get political so after the anarchist house of the dragon is coming on and you guys know what a game of thrones fan i am but i'm a game of thrones heretic i'm gonna tell you that right now this is where I'm going to lose my audience. <laughs> I didn't like the books. I liked the show. I don't think all of the seasons were great. Yeah, it had problems. But I, in general, liked it. Particularly the first four seasons. I didn't like the books. The books had way too many characters. And I'll tell you where the books lost me. The minute Penny was brought in. Penny and all of the side stories about the Blackfires, it lost me. 
it is was way too ponderous and way too complicated. When I want to read complicated things, I read nonfiction. I read to learn. I don't read fiction to have to have like, you know, that crazy chart. Which show is that from with all the connecting, you know, threads like to remember all the characters? No, I don't do it for that. I want to relax when I'm reading fiction. I don't want to have to remember like the family tree of the Wars of the Roses and the 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 Lancashires and you know I'm in England. I I I I don't need that. So I like the show. So I am going to be doing a House of the Dragon review show, but it is just going to be show canon. No. I might bring in book canon if I hear an interesting tidbit, tidbit, tidbit from another show. But I'm not going to make a lot, big deal about a book canon. It's all going to be about show canon. But again, I'm not going to completely rule out book canon because I, I will admit that even though it didn't appear in the show, the Valencar prophecy and book canon that didn't appear in show canon. I did like that quite a bit. And I wish it was in show canon. So like if I were doing the original Game of Thrones. I would be bringing up the Valencar prophecy. So there might be little things like that. But in general I'm just sticking to the show. I'm a casual Game of Thrones fan. Okay. I'm not a book fan. In fact I started reading the books before the HBO before I even knew they were making a show out of it. And I couldn't get past the first couple chapters. I was bored, silly, confused, and was like, what the hell? And then once I watch the show, I go, okay, maybe I just misunderstood the books. So I tried again, and the minute it got to Penny, I'm like, this is utter ridiculousness. And couldn't do it. So hate me if you want. Don't come for me. You know, but hate me if you want. But that's, we will be doing that after the anarchist. All right, I got to go fix the title from the show earlier. Tomorrow, I may be doing a show before my new candidate orientation because I am running for town council in Castle Rock. So wouldn't that be awesome if I won town council? I probably, oh my God, JJ. JJ, if I run for town council on Castle Rock, you might have to be defending me when they remove me. Because you just know. You just know I'm going to get in trouble, don't you? <laughs> oh, God, my Wikipedia entry is going to get very interesting. By the way, JJ, my Wikipedia entry is very out of date. Okay. <laughs> oh. oh, you should have ran. Um, Douglas County, I will say, is very good about the mandates. They just imposed like some real shitty taxes on us. That really got me going. All right, y'all. I'm going to get... Oh, I did... Hold on. Hold on. I didn't upload shit. I did create my new closing sequence with the new patrons and I didn't upload it to the drive so I could download it down here. I did create it. I promise I did. Oh my God. I'm just not with it tonight. All right, y'all. I'm going to get going. Thank you for helping me with my Twitch statistics and, um, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. Love you. Bye-bye.
gotta take what you're giving, that's how we live it Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians Or choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a business Not because they wanna